This Friday, there are two other cards that uh, she'll be speaking on behalf. She'll be speaking for Maria Perkins as well as for Rosemary Lewis. And Ellen Gallo, three cards. Yeah. Three cards, Ellen Gallo. Three of yours and two others, Maria Phillips as well as Rosemary Lewis. And Ellen Gallo. I'm sorry? Ellen Gallo, fill that one. Just
first. From USDOT's National Transit Database, the U.S. Department of Energy's Transportation Energy and Energy Information Administration has submitted the following. Rail lines use more energy than the average passenger car. Rail transit operations are supplemented with extensive bus operations. <coughs> Those bus operations have lower ridership, and, and so they have higher energy costs and more greenhouse gases emissions per passenger mile. Construction of transit lines consumes huge amounts of energy and cost. It would take many decades of energy savings to repay the cost of construction. While highway construction also uses energy, each mile of urban highway carries far more passenger miles and freight time miles of travel than a mile of rail line. Energy cost and pollution per passenger mile of highway construction is far lower than for transit construction. These um, statistics come, as I say, from the DOT itself. Getting only 15% of commuters to switch to hybrid electric cars will do far more to save energy than getting 1% to switch to public transit. But it is the gas tax that pays for the construction and maintenance of roads. If we switch to hybrids, how will we pay for the roads? Is the government going to tax our odometers by the mile? Are they going to continue to manipulate gas prices so our cars continue to get smaller and smaller until we're all driving clown cars? And whatever happened to the safety standards? 322 additional deaths per year occurs a bill result of producing just 100 pounds of vehicle weight. Today, size and weight restrictions required to meet the new CAFE standards resulted in 46,000 additional deaths. And while we're on the subject of being forced into smaller and smaller plan cars and being taxed by the mile on the agenda, a plan that is already on the books, do you think this would nudge people into driving less and less? And since the DOT and 750 want us out of our cars, that I have a show of hands of how many people in this room are willing to give up their automobiles and ride the train instead. <laughs> The not one proud passenger rail system in the United States that operates a private water over water create a loss on the investment plan. There's no data to prove that there'd be a ridership and there's no cost benefit analysis or return on investment. Data show that cost per passenger mile of public transportation is from five to nine times more costly than private transportation alternatives. Please justify spending five to nine times more for public transportation over private transportation. The American people are not stupid. Misinformed perhaps sometimes, but more than that, the communities along the proposed Olive Oil Florida route are railing, excuse the pun, against the idea of having 50 trains a day blasting through their quiet communities, business district, and their fragile environments. Letters to the newspapers are burgeoning every day with people who do not want this plan. The Jupiter to Bless of Hope Sound Association of Realtors released a resolution opposing all of the large rail system because of the major quality of life destructions and the um, deterioration of um, property values. These communities are our homes. We have economies that are based upon trade and commerce, not tourism. We're not Disney or Miami. We live in small communities because we like the quieter life and the low density population. That is why we live here. You're taking away our right to quiet enjoyment, which is a real estate law. What part of the don't want your trains here don't you understand? The Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council that is supposed to consist of publicly elected officials who represent the public are now been persuaded to lobby the government in Tallahassee promoting all of North Florida and 750's plan for regionalism to re-engineer our com com communities. We bypass local government and give them no voice and no choice to be the people. The Beach Journal states the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council sent a letter to the Governor Scott asking him to help include station stops <coughs> in Martin, St. Lucie, and New River counties. We do not want your help. Do you not understand this? Do you, do you ask the people of our treasure towns whether they want to stop or not? We do not. We live in low density communities by choice. Do you care about our living preferences? No. When Victor Dover, project leader and architect of 750, stated in Villa Beach in October of 2012, quote, 750 intends to bring millions of passengers from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, New York, and Beaches, end quote. 
You were quickly voted out of our county. Now nearly half of all seven counties have opted out. We do not want your population redistribution with the benefits only to your pre-chosen developers. Now you want to come back through the back door through your symbiotic relationship with all of North Florida through the Treasure Coast Regional Planning, which no longer represents the public by those who have been co-opted in the support of your HUD low income housing development and DOT package and your propaganda tour to the governor, Michael Bush. You're a shield for the developers. You're an unelected bureaucrat. You do not represent the people. Your self-serving overreach is shameful. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. We're, we're, we're not seeking personal attacks. Okay, scratch that. The, 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 I know, I believe the time to finish, Mr. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll stay my three minutes to Bill's prize and she can Don't start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much again. It's always so good for the uh, public to be heard. And these are their, their thoughts. Um, <clears throat> I did want to bring up a, a point uh, to tie in the fact that this is a package, a 750 package, with uh, the All Board Florida. I have the evidence to show this through letters and relationships uh, among, among the, these two groups. Um, but in short, what would be cozier than for a railroad um, to be supported by a group of developers who have a, um, a, a way uh, to re-engineer the communities which they live, and the developers would benefit from this transfer or redistribution of population from Miami into our smaller communities, and the developers are there waiting with their plans. We have attended all of their meetings, we've read all of their published documents, uh, they've gone to all of their keynote speakers, and um, they have made it our issue, our mission, or our interest, if you will, to educate ourselves about this. We've seen their plan, we've seen their rollout maps, we know where they're, they've designated the stops, uh, we know what kind of um, architecture and building they, they do. So it's very clear that this is a package deal. DOT and HUD grants combined are going to implement this plan, and they do intend to be engineer our communities. This is not a theory, it's called the New Republicanism, which is a good sprawl. Mr. Andre Duani, Mr. Victor Dover, and Marcella Campbell Camp at the same as Mr. Bush are all members of the Congress for the Urbanism uh, officials. Um, Mr. Bush's letter of support to the Federal Railroad Administration of December 12th, the notice of all of our clients states that the project would, quote, help encourage compact, mixed-use development and redevelopment, but also encourages a higher density and intensity of, develop of development. Again, the symbiotic relationship. Um, how nice for that. This, these, these statements that uh, have been provided by them to the press about uh, moving this um, the freight into the middle of the state, no, no, no thank you. Uh, and that would just allow uh, all of Florida to, to flourish and these uh, overly developed uh, communities along the way. Um, you're not doing us any favors there. We don't want to be part of the President's Council on Sustainable Development that wants 80% of us to travel by train by 2025. And um, what about our housing preferences? I mean, the um, Community Preferences Survey, sponsored by the National Association of Realtors, shows that only 8% of those surveyed prefer to live in a city with a mix of all offices and shops and mixed use development, which is exactly what Dover Cole does. 80% want to live in single-family homes, and privacy is their top priority. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Alex Thanks, Bert.